Have you ever seen a snail crawling through your backyard on a cold rainy day? And have you ever wondered how tasty escargot meals are prepared from such slow slimy animals? This is possible due to a process called helicoculture, or snail farming, which is practiced in many countries worldwide. Today on Need for Knowledge, we go behind the scenes to see how snails are farmed. We'll also talk about how snails are harvested and processed and the special techniques that professional snail farmers use. Snail farming is a very lucrative business, and most of the profit comes in the final stages, which are harvesting and processing. However, a sequence of steps must be followed before you can make millions from the practice. You'll have to choose the snails to rear, prepare a snail pen, and most importantly, maintain the farm. Each of these steps is a lot more ambiguous than it might seem and one little mishap can cost the farmer the lives of many snails. When it comes to the first step of snail farming, which is picking out the snail, there are so many things a snail farmer looks out for. The species, the size, the quality of the snail, and so on. The first snails brought into the pen largely determine the quality of the snails that will be reared, because the next generation of snails will share their qualities. This is why the farmer has to choose good and healthy ones, only one species can be reared on each farm, and some of the most commonly reared ones are Helix pomatia and Helix aspersa. Although these are the smaller species, they have their benefits. For example, they can lay hundreds of eggs at once and survive in various seasons. Other common species of snails include Achatina achatina and Achatina marginata. Compared to the members of the Helix genus, the Achatina are larger in size which is a quality that many farmers prefer. However, they can only survive in warm climates all year round. So you can agree with me that picking a species to rear transcends the physical appearance of the animals. Another factor farmers consider is the age of the snail they're buying. Farmers usually go for the fully grown snails, which are in their reproductive years. This allows for the quick population of the farm, which is good for business. Having a lip on its shell is a good indication that a snail is fully grown, so that's something snail farmers look out for. Also, it's imperative for a farmer to be able to tell which snails are the healthiest, and there's a trick that helps. Snails that completely fit into their shells are considered fit and most worthy of being purchased. All these qualities factor heavily into the farmer's choice of the snail pen. Which brings us to the next step of snail farming, which is to prepare the snail pen. This is a very important step because the snail's living conditions greatly affect their sustainability and lifespan. Snails in the wild have an average lifespan of about 3-4 to four years, but this duration can be increased to 21 if they are reared under the right conditions. It goes without saying that a snail pen should be as close to a snail's natural habitat and even have better conditions. A good location for a snail pen is a moist and wind-free environment. Snails are known to bury themselves under moist soil, usually found in the garden or under a tree. So rearing a snail in an environment where the soil doesn't drain well is not good for the snail. However, soils that absorb too much water aren't good for them either, so the water content of the soil must be closely monitored. Other environmental factors to consider besides soil moisture content are weather, humidity, light, soil pH, etc. To ensure that the snails are living under optimum conditions at all times, a snail farmer has to have measuring equipment on hand. These include a hygrometer, pH meter, thermometer, soil moisture sensor, and a soil kit to test the soil contents. The environment of the snail pen can also be controlled artificially through the use of water sprinkling systems and lighting systems. The snails must also be kept in an environment with enough shade to protect them from excessive sunlight or rain during the rainy seasons. The farmer should also have a magnifying glass to observe the small snail eggs and weighing scales to monitor the growth of the snails. Another quality that a proper snail pen should have is that it should protect the snails from pests and predators. This includes a series of actions, like building a fence around the pen, administering drugs to kill pests, frequently treating infected snails, and a bunch of other health precautions. To ensure proper hygiene is maintained, food is replaced daily, 
and earthworms are put into the soil as biological means of sustaining the pen. Another factor a snail farmer tries to keep under control in a snail pen is the snail population. Getting more snails than a pen can accommodate and not controlling the population of the snails will lead to overcrowding, which is unhealthy. The standards of spacing in a snail pen is six snails per square meter for small snails, and for bigger ones, one to two snails per square meter is the limit. Overpopulation leads to the rapid spread of diseases, which leads to a population decline. Also, snails do not reproduce when they're densely packed together, which leads to a stagnant population. After ensuring the conditions are conductive for the snails to live, it's important to feed the snails with the right things and provide clean water. Generally, snails are known to live off plant-based meals. They eat leaves, especially the juicy ones, and their diet includes things like boiled potatoes, vegetable trimmings, fruits, and sometimes chicken feeding mash to incorporate proteins in their diet. Also, snails do not eat all year round. They have a feeding season that spans most of the year. Breeding snails also take a break from feeding before they lay their eggs and resume feeding afterward. Once a conductive environment is created for the snails, it's normal that they thrive, grow, and reach the stage where they're ready to be harvested. Whether they're being bred for commercial purposes or for food, once the snails reach a particular development level, they're harvested from the pen. The Helix aspersa species, for example, are attracted once they weigh 6 grams. And generally, snails are harvested once a lip forms on their shell. However, not all of the snails are harvested. On most professional snail farms, 5% of the harvest is selected as the breeders for the next generation. Farmers make money from the snails they sell, as well as snail eggs, which can be processed into snail caviar or white caviar. However, special techniques are needed to extract the eggs before they can be sold to interested buyers. After harvesting snails and their eggs, the next and final step is processing. Before snails can be eaten, they have to be processed, and it doesn't matter whether this is done industrially or on a much smaller scale. Whether in a factory or in a small kitchen, snail processing is not a complicated process. Once the snail is washed thoroughly and the incredible parts are cut out, the snails are ready to be prepared in any way the consumer sees fit. However, one difference between the industrial and local methods of snail processing is that there's a higher risk that the snail's quality drops in industrial processing. The practice of snail consumption dates back to the prehistoric era, and over the years, it's been adopted by billions of people all over the world. Because of the nutritional value of snails and the effective marketing strategy, the practice of snail farming and snail consumption is expected to keep growing in the coming years. In many cases, people don't eat snails that they bought, but rather, most people eat snails harvested from nature. In the Western world, the species of snail most popularly known for eating, Helix pomatia, is usually harvested from under a tree or inside a garden, especially during the rainy seasons. Meanwhile, commercial farming in the West is done using Cornu aspersum, which is just one of the other 60,000 species of snails in the world. What's your favorite escargot meal? Leave your answer in the comments section below. Thank you for watching this episode of Need for Knowledge, and we will see you in the next one. Don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe for new videos.